Welcome to New Day Cleveland. I'm David Moss, and guess what? We are on the road again, and check it out. We're in beautiful downtown Bucyrus. A little forced perspective here. Isn't that a beautiful mural there? Just a little bit of old little town Americana kind of thing. And I got to tell you, I had a great time when I first got to town. I had a chance to talk to the mayor, and he was telling me a bunch of cool stuff I didn't know about this place. Bucyrus just happens to be in a place that sort of intersected the railroads between here and Chicago. That means Back during the 20s and the 30s, Al Capone, speakeasies, illegal booze, partying, big time music, all that kind of stuff happened here, along with a big German population, which made this the bratwurst capital of America. And they prove it each and every August, where they, they consume like 27 tons of bratwurst, something like that. Well, I gotta tell you, it's a great little town, full of history, full of a lot of things I'm gonna show you throughout the hour. But uh, right now, we're gonna run into a young lady named Donna, who works with the Historical Society here in the Travelers Bureau, and she's gonna tell us a little bit about this beautiful mural here, which has some uh, national implications, I think, and what a beautiful forced perspective that is, isn't it? Yes, very much so, and it's yesteryear of Bucyrus, Ohio. Boy, it is just great looking. So, how did this come to Bucyrus, and, and who is the artist? Did you do it? No, I don't think. <laughs> uh, it was painted by Eric Groy from Marysville, Washington, and it was begun in 1999 in June and was dedicated in October of 1999. There were several people came here dressed of the, in the era. Eric chose the people that would uh -huh. be in the mural. So each one is somebody from Bucyrus. So this is sort of a bridge on the top here, huh? Bridging the city together. Bridging the community together? Yes. I like it. Who's Labrador Retriever? Okay, that's... <laughs> there, it's actually somebody's. Uh, Augustus... <laughs> um, Really? Juilliard. Justice Juilliard. Had hey. the Juilliard School of Music in New York City. I learned that about this town too. Yes. I, didn't he help put the library together here? Yes, and he had a home here, a summer home here. It's a good place to raise children. You can tell that from the from the picture here. Yes, exactly. There's another mural here too. What, what is that one? It's done yes. by the same artist, right? Yes, same. Eric Growey, Liberty Remembers, and it's located just north of this one here on the square. He, he came back to finish it right when 9-11 occurred, didn't he? Yes, he started it in July of 2001, and it was nearly completed in 2000, uh, when 9-11 occurred, mm -hmm. and that's when he put the inscription on it. Okay, now Donna, you're from the Bucyrus Tourism and Visitors Bureau. Correct. I've got about 55 minutes more to spend in Bucyrus, so not a lot of time, a lot of things to do. You think I should check out the uh, where they make the bratwurst? Yes, they're... Woohoo! Yes, and have a sandwich. I'm gonna do that. Yes. So, so I'm going to Carly's, Bratwurst, and Market. Right. I'll see you later. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Carly's, Bratwurst, and Market. Here we are in the Bratwurst capital of America. That's what they say, right, Dick? That's exactly it, yes. So I thought when I came in here, I'd meet Carly, but I'm meeting... No, uh, Dick Gervais. And you're, you're running the place right this minute, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm in charge right now, yes. Hey, so how did, how, did the, how did this town get to be the Bratwurst capital of America? Well, this um, this is a family-owned business. Uh, they're in third generation right now. It started in 1929, and at uh, that point, they started uh, as a small meat market uh -huh. and started producing uh, the family recipe Bratwurst. Hey, so when they have that big festival, is it in August every year? Yeah. And they talk about they have, what, 24 tons, 27 tons of Bratwurst. Do you guys making a lot of the that? The majority comes from here. Here. There's wow. uh, a couple other producers, but we produce the majority. What's in a bratwurst? Uh, you, I guess this is a German style bratwurst, right? Uh, yeah, it has its own special twist, and um, it, it's. I like that twist. That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, there you go. It's a <laughs> secret family recipe, so uh -huh. I can't tell you a whole so lot. So it's, it's mostly pork, though, huh? Mostly pork, yes. Various cuts of pork ground, uh -huh. and then the, the the secret to it is the seasoning. And sort of explain that process to me. I mean, the first thing they do is they what they grind up what a certain percentage of, of, of lean to fat. Right. And then they mix in the uh, the eggs, the uh, various uh, seasonings, and it simply then uh, run it through the, the sausage maker. And when you have sausage, what, what kind of casings do they use on that? These are a pig casing, pig intestine casing. Plus a natural casing. Natural casing. Which yeah. is really good because when you when you barbecue those, they pop when you bite they them, huh? They pop, exactly. And that's, that's, that's important, key. isn't it? That's a real key, yes. Yeah. yeah. So when people come in here for lunch, I understand when this place around noontime, it's loaded. The hot bar, we make everything here with the exception of a couple items that are bought already made and uh -huh. reheat. 
Um, you can catch the action here a little bit. We also have a lot of grab and go items here. Right. We make the sandwiches, the uh, veggie pizzas, and uh, cheese balls, salads. I tell you, the day. thing that gets me though is the whole bratwurst thing. I mean, that's, that's the secret to this place, that's right? The, that's the key. That's what would, it's made us famous. So, how many different kinds do you make? Flavors. Okay, we have sausages at this end chicken sausage, uh, there's turkey sausage. Uh, we have a sweet Italian, a hot Italian. Boy, that this looks is good. a very unique one: a spinach feta chicken sausage. Okay, so it's got a little cheese in it, a little yep. Greek cheese. Yep. And then from here on over are all our different types of actual bratwurst. So this is like a little bratwurst. Yep, that's a party length we call it. People will serve that in a mustard sauce and uh, as an hors d'oeuvre type thing. Party links. I like party. Yep. And then we have um, an, an apple, well that's another sausage there, apple cinnamon. Mm -hmm. um, well, you can make a lot of stuff. Yes, we do. And then here are the bratwurst, the chicken original links. Instead of the pork, it's the chicken. Um, the hot brat links are in here. We have them in patties and links. Wow. And then um, the originals. How do, how do these measure up, like to say, if you were to go one-on-one -on -one with somebody in Germany with their bratwurst? Oh, we think it's the best. Yeah. Um, and our owner that uh, visited there said it, it was different, let's yep. put it that way. They're, they're completely different products, and the, the family recipe here has obviously caught on. We ship to every state in the country. I think the only place we haven't shipped is Hawaii. We've, wow. We've shipped to Alaska, we've shipped overseas. Um, so, great place to, when you come through Bucyrus, to stop in and get yourself a sandwich. So, um, we'll be here. Next time I come through here, I'm stopping back here too. All right. Really Appreciate good stuff, that. man. Thanks Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you much. After the break, guns, gangsters, and girls. Anytime we have a date, but I love her. Okay, I keep talking about this speakeasy thing in here, Bucyrus. You know, Al Capone supposedly came through here, and they said a lot of those cats did. In fact, some bank robbers came here one time, and they were like getting ready to do their nitro thing. They blew themselves up. Boom! Didn't go so well for them. They went to pieces. But here we are downstairs, and it looks like we've got a supporting cast of characters to greet us. Okay, you're thinking I'm talking about this cast of characters. We've got George Bugs Moran here, Scarface. We've got all these cats, Machine Gun Jack. A lot of characters here, but no, that's not the characters I'm talking about. We're in one of those like tunnels under the city of Bucyrus here, you know, where they used to have speakeasy places and criminals used to hang out, they used to do gambling and stuff. And you heard about, uh, what's, what's his name? Scarface. What's, oh, oh, hey, he doesn't like that name, Scarface. You, you, know. you look a little You're, bit like Big Al, don't you? <laughs> yeah, they tell me I do. A yeah, bit. I guess yeah. you do. Some guys yeah, call you Big Mike also, though, right? Uh, yeah, more familiar. This guy here, yeah. hanging out the speakeasy, used to be a school teacher, right? Yes. And now you're playing one of the most famous criminals of all time. Yeah, yeah, I guess. So <laughs> right everybody's having fun with this here. We got a little card game going on here with the girls. Yep. So what happens down here in the uh, in the in the tunnels, the speakeasy? <laughs> well, um, this actually was a real speakeasy. I don't know how much you've done that ahead, but uh, an Al. You said I'm not prepared. Here. Is that? What? Oh. I don't know how much oh. you've already got on camera. Okay, I know you're oh. prepared. Thank you. Man. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Al Capone actually came here. Uh, residents that have their parents. Uh, talked about how Al would have his own siding car pull off on a siding. Yeah. And they remembered their parents telling them, now nah, don't you go near that car. Uh, you know, that's big trouble. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of history of him coming through here, whether it's because we're halfway through. But uh, this is all actual booths and stuff that were here at the time that he would have yeah, been you know, they, here. They talk about how the trains came through here. So it's like, like on the way to Chicago, on the way to Cleveland, on the way just about anywhere, yeah. north, south, east, west. So you got that going on. But I really get a kick out of the idea that the mayor, you, an ex teacher, they all get excited talking about these gangs and speakeasies <laughs> it, it's and the illegal different. booze and, yeah. the, and the dames. I heard about the red light district around here. That, that is supposedly famous. Yes. Well, so that, got, that's one of the big attractions. You got some hot dames down here, huh? There we go. Yes, yeah, look at that. Look at the lady in the pearls and all the jewelry there, playing little cards. So they used to gamble down here too, huh? Oh yeah, they had a little bit of everything. They had places that they'd hide it if the police come, but uh, Al was pretty well known for his uh, connections with the police. I mean, at different times. It's kind of weird, sort of almost uh, popularizing such a 
nefarious figure, I guess. I think it's sort but, of fun. Uh, he did a lot of good things. He started soup kitchens. Uh, he, he helped with the security on elections in Chicago at one time. There's another stories. nefarious character there right there. Go. Speaking of nefarious characters, in. I heard some of, there's like a little show that happens down here once in a while. Yes. Is that, is that um, like a spontaneous kind of yeah. singing kind of thing? Well, when we get groups through here, we have our flappers come out. We have a few numbers and... Uh, have a little floor show here. I like yes. the I like the women down here. It's a pretty pretty <laughs> pretty on, high crew. Blondie, let's go. We're gonna be late. Look, Lily, oh, what's the oh, rush? Oh, oh, girls oh. got things to do. Well, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got a girl that's always late. Louis. Anytime we have a date. But I love her. Yes, I love her. He's gonna walk. Up to my gate and see if he can get it straight. Mm, Cause it straight. he wants me, he's gonna ask me. Mm. Well, is you is or is you ain't my baby? The way you're acting lately makes me doubt. You well, Big Al, pretty cool, huh? It, yeah, so it's a lot of fun. So um, I, I see he's got a girl. There's a girl left over here. Where's your girl? Uh, I roam around girl to girl. I hardly ever have the same girl twice. But that yeah. is one of the reasons I don't like to stop here. That's right. <laughs> it's any girl I want. That's right. I had a great time down here great. to speak easy to Cyrus, man. Okay, hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, welcome back to New Day Cleveland, and uh, I tell you what, Bucyrus has been very welcoming to me. And here's a place that's probably welcomed a lot of people in its many long years. The building was built 1860-something, or late 1850s, and it's the home of the Deep Picking and Company. And I'm going to meet a lovely lady who knows a lot about this place because her name is Helen Picking, Picking Naff. Naff. Yes. How are you? Fine, I'm fine. Nice Thank to you see much. you. Boy, this well, is this is a great old place. So, so I love it, and I'm a I'm a great old girl. I'm all beating a path toward a hundred. <laughs> really, you're almost a hundred. <laughs> no, still eighty in the nineties. I'm in the nineties yet. Ninety six. In the nineties. Well, that's that's pretty good. Hey, I, I see that there's a copper wastebasket here. Yes, which... we do not manufacture them. That that's a special make of a of a copper kettle. So, so you, yeah. so you, well, you make here kettles, not waste baskets, no, right? No, that's right. We make kettles. Well, we make waste baskets. We make waste baskets. You can see when you come out through here uh -huh. that we're here. All the things that we do make. I want to step behind you here and yeah. grab something okay. here, and maybe you can tell me about this. What, what, what's this here? That is a, something that had a tea kettle that has nothing to do with me. No? Except that somebody gave it to me and I put it there just for people to ask questions about. Well, I just asked a question. How about that? You know, I came in here and I look all around here and yes. some of the stuff looks like it's been hanging on the walls a long time. A long time. Some of them have been. I always say that anything that falls on the floor, I pick up and put on the wall. So, so it's been here a long time. Uh, for example, the little, that very handsome little man was a uh, actually was an advertisement piece for the hardware store. So you this started out as a hardware store. The hardware store was over on Main Street, uh -huh. and we came from the hardware store. So what's up with all the elephants? Who's who's that guy? Uh, he became my father's story was that when he was three years old, he fell in love with elephants, and at 103, he was still having his picture taken on an elephant. At 103? He, they brought an elephant here. The little circus came to town and they brought a little circus in here, a little elephant here, right in front of the door. And my father got up on that elephant and uh, pretended to be riding, of course. But he, he rode in circuses pretty much as a, as a hobby. Uh -huh. he, at that time, there were a lot of little circuses, you know, so he had, he had a chance to do it. You got a funny family. I, I have, yes, my father was a funny man. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a very, very interesting man and had lots of interest, lots of interest. My great-grandfather started making kettles. He saw one that they had done in Pennsylvania and he thought, my gosh, I, my tinsmiths could do a kettle like that. And that's how it started. Well, yes, and he sent to Pennsylvania for some copper workers, workers and they came here. And he opened up his houses for them and for their families. And they came here and actually taught the men in the shop who were tinsmiths to begin with and roofers, taught them how to handle copper. Well, you know, I know your company's so, been successful over the years because I see the size of your safe, a safe so big. Yeah. Someone told me they had to build a building around the safe. Well, actually we brought it over from the hardware store, but they did build a special track 
wow. from the hardware store, clear over from Main Street over here and put it in place. And I and it's, it's there forever as far as I'm concerned. But I love it. I think it's so beautiful. I think it's a very, very handsome piece. I think it's a handsome and piece. It is just very, very handsome. Hey, speaking of handsome pieces, do you think I can go back in the shop and see what the guys are making, some of the stuff that's You can go right there? back there, yes. You can go back there any, any place you want. Thank you very so, much. It's yeah. so nice to meet you. It's good to meet you, too. Okay, back into the shop here. Hey, Keith, how you doing? All right, how are you? Pretty good. A little soldering taking place here, huh? Yeah, this is Steve, and he's doing some soldering on a coal hod. It's going to be a decorative item. We're going to get it polished and lacquered there. Oh, that would be like the thing that you carry the coal around to the old fireplace or coal burner, yes, huh? Yes, they call them coal hods, yes. Wow. What, what are these big pots? These are all going to be candy kettles. They're waiting to have the bottoms put into them there. So these are real live working tools. This is not just decorative stuff. No, this is going to be for cooking there. We make them for Disneyland, Dollywood, places like that to make chocolates in there. Somebody told me some of your stuff's in the Smithsonian. Yeah, we have one of our cheese kettles that are out in the front there. It made a 200 pound wheel of cheese in 1880. Wow. And it's in the Smithsonian, yes. And I see you have the most space age equipment here. Yeah, the machines were put in in 1912. That's when electricity was put in the building. But even though we do have the machines, 80% is still done by hand today. This is Rex, and he, we do our own blacksmithing. We make our own bales, handles, stands. Anything out of iron is made right there by the blacksmith. Wow. So that beats the old anvil hammer arm thing, you know? The big machine, that's pretty good. Look at that. Flatten right out. That is cool as beans, man. What do you got up in this room? This is the planishing room. We're the only company left in the United States that planishes the copper. What does that mean? Planishing means to hammer. We hammer the whole kettle, which not only hardens it and brightens it, but we make the timpanis for the New York Symphony, the Boston Pops, Get out. the Cleveland Orchestra, and that gives them a deeper bass tone because we planish or hammer the whole kettle. So that makes the metal denser then, doesn't it? It can, yeah, it compresses that, that makes it uh, harder there. So you put it over something like this, and uh, this is what you hammer on. That is a limb off of a tree that was put in 137 years ago when the company started there. And we slide the kettles over to work them. After they come out of what is called the pickle, which is a sulfuric acid tank, they are cleaned, and then we slide them over the head. We have different heads for different size kettles. Oh, yeah, I see round ones and everything, huh? Yes, we'll slide them over there, and we'll flatten this out to the curvature of the head. Then we take the steel hammers, and we hammer about an inch all the way around the kettle by hand, down the side seam. Then we can put on the machine, and the machine will go up to where we can hammer it there. The machines were put in in 1912. That's a, we well, got these. They're from practically brand new. Yeah, they are. They run great <laughs> there. They they were used when we put them in in 1912. They used to be used in Detroit to make uh, fenders for automobiles. Get out of it. Really? Yes. Helen's father went to Detroit when they were modernizing and bought some of their used machinery. Hey, I have to ask you a question. How is Helen to work for? She seems like she's not a very serious person. She jokes a lot, huh? Oh.